Hello, Patricia and fans. Thank you so much for having me on Casos e Misterios. Oi, meus misteriosos, tudo bem com vocês? Cá estou eu novamente para mais uma belíssima entrevista com mais um ator de Mind Hunter e dessa vez nós vamos conversar com o Adam. O Adam William Zestro. Ele até me mandou como é que fala o sobrenome dele. Zestro. É Zestro. O Adam, ele fez o papel do assassino Daryl Jean. Pra quem não sabe da história, do caso, do papel que ele interpretou, tá aqui o cardzinho do vídeo sobre o caso, que eu botei aqui no canal pra vocês saberem antes de sair essa entrevista, pra vocês ficarem mais por dentro do assunto. O Adam não fez só Mind Hunter não, ele fez diversos trabalhos. Inclusive, ele participou de uma série que eu vivo falando aqui e que eu fiquei chocada. Que ele participou de American Horror Story. Ele aparece na nona temporada atuando com o um ator que fez o Richard Ramirez. Ele participou também e é um dos principais personagens da série Chapado e Poderoso. Ele também atuou em um dos episódios de 911, uma série muito conhecida aqui no Brasil. 911. Ele também participou de alguns episódios de O Método Kominsky, também muito conhecido aqui no Brasil. Ele também participou de alguns episódios da série com a nossa querida e eterna Phoebe de Friends, a série The Comeback. Ele participou de um episódio de Brooklyn Nine-Nine. A sua mais recente participação foi no filme Bliss, que vai ao ar em breve aqui no Brasil. Pro Adam, eu também separei quatro perguntas, como de costume, e também a principal pergunta sempre vai ter, que é a que a gente sempre quer saber. Adam... Como você se preparou para poder interpretar Daryl Jean na série Mind Hunter? Um, how did I prepare for the role? Uh, well, I mean, I did all the standard stuff that you would do for, you know, any character building technique. Um, you have the advantage when working with people that were real life living humans that you can uh, do a lot of actual research. So I looked up the town where he grew up, um, tried to find active videos and audio clips of how the people sounded, and, you know, what the regional dialect was for that area at the time. Um, because things do change, you know, over the course of 40 years from when it happened to when we started filming. Um, but for the most part, the dialects stayed pretty much the same. So I started working on that right away. Um, David Fincher had the wonderful foresight to ship me out to Pittsburgh about six or seven weeks ahead of time and have a, a dental mold actually made because um, Daryl had a very distinct uh, front tooth that was kind of crooked in a certain way. So. He sent me out really early, took a dental mold. They had um, a fake set of teeth made that I then wore for the next six weeks before we even started shooting, just so I could get used to wearing it and get used to, you know, talking the way that Daryl would have. Because, you know, when you don't naturally have that already, you put a prosthetic in like that, it's obviously going to change the way that you, that you talk. And, you know, Daryl having grown up with that his whole life, he would have spent a long time, especially early on, learning to move his lips and move his mouth and, you know, form his words in a certain way so that he could hide the tooth because it would have been an embarrassment. So, you know, if the second I put it on initially, everything was fa 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 and I had to basically reteach myself how to talk and then learn this regional dialect on top of it. So it was it was a bit of a challenge, but it was really, really fun. Um, and then as far as getting into the, the darker set of, of his mind, um, that one messed me up a little bit, I'm not gonna lie. Um, when we were doing rehearsals a few weeks ahead of time, uh, and we were talking about how the scene was going to be set, and they were talking about the rock being in the corner and stuff, um, I had made a request that they get a rock that really weighed the 51 pounds, that the one that he had used to do what he did, um, so that I could get an idea of how it felt in my hands and get it, you know, gauge the size of it and everything. And then once I did that, when I, I flew back home, um, before we started shooting, I went out and, and got a rock of similar size and man, this was so bad for my psyche, but I, I started smashing watermelons and melons and cantaloupes and, you know, anything that I could find that was roughly the size of a human head and just started smashing it with this rock so I could get the idea of what that felt like to him, you know, just physically how that actually felt. And um, and I think that really, really helped a lot, man. It's, you're taking me back to a lot of really dark memories right now. Um, yeah, so I'm sure there's a couple of people that have 
you know, cell phone videos of a weird guy smashing melons in a park here in Los Angeles and had no idea what was really going on, but... A segunda pergunta é a seguinte, na cena de Mind Hunter, onde o Derry é interrogado, os agentes do FBI eles usam a técnica da pedra, onde eles deixam à mostra as roupas da vítima e também a pedra utilizada para o assassinato. O que você achou dessa técnica? E também como que foi para você uh, interpretar a reação que o Daryl teria tido naquele momento que a pedra é mostrada? Well, yeah, the answer for question two then would be going back to what I said about the rock in, in the first part. So the fact that I had spent so much time doing that, it, it gave me a really, really good memory to draw on from in the moment, you know? Um, I mean, part of the, you know, part of the challenges with television and film is that everything is start and stop, start and stop, start and stop. You're in it, then you're out of it, you're in it, then you're out of it. And having, use that rock to you know smash the melons and knowing that it was it was the real weight and roughly the real size of the rock that was actually used it, it gave me a, a very good physical tether to tie on to so that every moment when we were shooting that scene and that rock came into view i was able to instantly go back to all of those memories that i had and it, it helped keep me centered and, and keep me in place and you know reminding me what was going on and It was a very, very useful <clears throat> technique as an actor, you know. Um, I mean, Fincher's a great director for that. He's, you know, arguably one of the best there is. He's definitely on the top for me to check off on my list of directors I wanted to work with. And he's, he's definitely an actor's director. You know, like you say, you need something for a scene, he's going to give it to you. And because he knows the, the end result's going to be, he's going to get what he wants too. So I think that, <clears throat> having the rock in the scene and doing what they did. I mean, obviously, besides the fact that it was, you know, in the book and for the majority of the interview for Daryl, we actually um, did everything almost verbatim from how the real interview played out. We had complete transcripts of everything and the majority of the scripts was written right off of that. So, you know, they used the rock in real life. It had the reaction that it did with him, you know, probably for the same reason that it did with me, where it was that that memory was just so ingrained in his skull that there wasn't, you know, it, it wouldn't have mattered how prepared he was. There was there was nothing that would have been able to keep his mind from going there and, and revealing, you know, to both of those agents what had happened at the time. A terceira pergunta, Adam, é em relação à série Mind Hunter. Essa série ela é muito aclamada aqui no Brasil. Uh, você saberia nos dizer, assim, na sua opinião, por que que essa série ela faz tanto sucesso aqui? Um, I don't know why it would be so popular in Brazil, in particular. I mean, I know. You know, just in general, that we as humans have a very deep, dark fascination with serial killers. You know, if we didn't, these types of shows wouldn't exist. You know, Discovery Channel and Investigative Discovery and all of those, you know, murder channels that we all watch at night on Netflix. You know, those things wouldn't exist if we weren't interested in them. I, th I think, you know, probably one of the reasons why is because as, you know, as humans, one of the things that separates humans from the rest of the animal kingdom is our ability to empathize with other creatures you know across time distance and reality so we can we can read a book about something that happened to somebody you know 500 years ago and we can empathize with them we can watch a movie about you know aliens and people getting blinked out of existence and we can empathize with the characters in those situations as well even though they don't even really exist so You know, since we have that ability, we, we can also, we're also very, very self-aware and, you know, we all get those weird little thoughts in our heads of random flashes of things. And, uh, you know, I think watching other people explore those tendencies and explore those, those needs, you know, fulfills that little bit of a need in all of us. I think, I think it's just you know, humans being so intelligent and being so self-aware, we're aware of all of our emotions. We can give labels to all of them. And we know that a lot of them are very, very taboo to follow through on for a lot of reasons. And to see, you know, some people be able to turn off that, that inhibition switch and be able to decide for whatever reason that, you know, taking another life is, is the proper course of action. We find it we find it very fascinating, and I think on how they're able to to do that, or what drives them to do that. You know, what what is it in them that is so powerful that 
they're able to override that that natural innate feeling to not harm another human being. You know, most people don't need someone or something to tell them not to kill another human. It's just something you know. You're you're generally able to just say, I wouldn't want somebody to kill me, so I'm not going to kill other people. You know, so when we find those people that <clears throat> can not only do that, but to do it in such excess in the way that serial killers do and, and with, you know, such ritualistic tendencies, it's it's a very fascinating thing to study. Uh, I mean, why, again, why Brazil would be very, very into it. I, I wouldn't know enough about the culture to be able to comment on that. That would be a, a question I would ask you and your fans. Why is it that Brazil is so interested in my daughter? Um, I mean, I know in that area you had, um, I'm probably going to butcher his name and I'm so sorry for that. I, I think it was Padrino Matador, like they called him Killer Petey, I think. You know, I mean, he's one of the most prolific. He had, I believe, over 300 victims, you know, and he was just caught in 2003, something like that. So, I mean, you've ideally, or not ideally, I guess that's the worst word. Um, you realistically have, you know, a very prolific killer in that area you know, in very recent times. So it's, you know, it's definitely very fresh in a lot of people's memories. There's a lot, plenty of people today that, you know, could have been very easily affected by that. Um, yeah, I think I think it really just goes to the natural human nature of, of, of wondering and of inquisition and, you know, just wanting to understand everything that is around us at all times. You know? A quarta e última pergunta, Adam, é... Você tem algum personagem favorito da série, tirando você, é claro? Uh, algum personagem que te impactou mais, tanto na atuação, quanto pelos crimes cometidos na vida real? Besides me, of course. Uh, that impacted me the most with the performance and crimes committed. Yeah, um, I mean, obviously... Cameron Britton playing Ed, Edmund Kemper is is one of the great highlights of the show. I mean, he was nominated for an Emmy for the first season, well deservedly. Um, he absolutely just just killed that character, uh, pun intended, I guess. Um, he did a really really amazing job, as well as uh, Jack Erdy, who played uh, Richard Speck. I think Speck was the one that left the the most initial impact on me. Um, that scene right at the end where he throws the bird into the fan is just, this is crazy. Um, but both of those guys really, really stood out for me. I mean, everybody was amazing. You know, the casting did an incredible job. Mayfield Schubert is, is so amazing with their castings and everything that they do. Um, and it, you know, it's interesting. I probably should have brought this up during one of the other questions. Um, one of the, probably during the first one, one of the hardest things I think for Daryl Jean was that compared to the rest of the other killers, there wasn't a lot of, of stuff for us, to, for us to find. There was only a handful of pictures. You know, most of them were in black and white. His, his mouth was closed and all of the records kept saying he had very, very long hair. But in the, in the pictures, it always was slicked straight back and behind his head. So it always looked very, very short. Um, so we, we didn't have as much media presence to pull off of for Daryl. I, I wasn't able to find a lot of active videos of him besides him sitting in interrogation to be able to you know, develop mannerisms and stuff. Um, but then back to what we were just talking about, if you look at uh, how Cameron portrayed Kemper, I mean, there's, you know, there's plenty of YouTube videos where you can see side by side the real interview versus what Cameron was doing. And, you know, it's it's almost identical. It was absolutely insane how amazing of a job he did. Um, and then, yeah, Richard Speck with Jack, he just really freaked the hell out of me during his whole scene. <laughs> Uh, that was a guy that you just did not want to be in the same room with, man. And uh, both of those guys are very, very nice gentlemen in real life. I've had the pleasure of, of meeting and hanging out with both of them on a couple of occasions, and they're absolutely great people. Uh, I hope you get to talk to them as well. Um, you know, Happy Anderson's uh, portrayal of Rudos was also incredible. I mean, I'll never look at a, a woman's shoe <laughs> the same way again, thanks to him. Um, he's also a very nice guy. I haven't met him officially, uh, but we have a, a mutual friend in common and we did contact each other a few times when I was in New York. I was trying to, to meet up with him just because I wanted to try to meet all the rest of the guys that were in the cast. Um, and you're reminding me now that that's a mission I need to continue with. Uh, I hope this was everything you wanted. If you have any other questions, feel free to send me something. Patricia, thank you so much. Uh, I look forward to hearing from you again in the future and looking at all the rest of your interviews. Have a great day.
Gente, essa entrevista, assim como as outras, é uma mais incrível que a outra, né? Muito legal, né, gente? Uh, assim como o Adam, uh, como o Rap, como o Sony, o Chris, todos eles têm a acrescentar muito nas entrevistas, porque eles têm opiniões bem distintas em relação a certos assuntos, a forma de se preparar, que eu já tinha mencionado aqui antes. Muito interessante ele mencionar o nosso serial killer aqui do Brasil, né? Que eu também não gosto muito de falar o nome, mas muito interessante ele conhecer né, e mencionar, assim, eu fiquei, tipo, bem chocada. E também fiquei bem chocada em saber da preparação dele, né? Que ele teve que quebrar melões, quebrar melancias pra entender qual a sensação de quebrar a cabeça de uma pessoa. Isso deve ter impactado muito o psicológico dele. E todos esses atores, acredito, que interpretam serial killers, eles têm que ir a fundo mesmo, eles têm que entrar na pessoa, eles têm que entrar no personagem pra poder trazer ela da forma mais real possível. Com certeza isso deve impactar muito o psicológico deles. Gostaria de deixar aqui o meu agradecimento a quem fez a tradução do vídeo do Adam, ao Léo França, muito obrigada novamente. Gostaria de agradecer a todos que estão vendo esse vídeo por estarem me ajudando a compartilhar por mais essa conquista e vamos torcer para que tenhamos mais entrevistas, né gente? Juro para vocês que eu estou tentando. Não se esqueça de deixar o like aqui nesse vídeo se você gostou, de comentar bastante, de divulgar para os amigos. Não se esqueçam de se inscrever aqui no canal, né gente? Já tá na hora, né? De me seguir lá nas redes sociais, lá no Instagram, casos.mistérios. E agora, vamos mudar um pouco o final, né? Se Deus quiser, se tudo der certo, eu vejo vocês na próxima entrevista. Um beijo.